Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Well, we had a very, very exciting week. And at the end of it, the risk dial is still very much in positive territory. We had, um, you know, a couple of feints to the downside in the score, all the way from 89 down to 53, but we closed at 73. The week was basically closed unchanged, but what it showed is that the risk spreads are slowly, slowly coming in, and that is uh, mainly due to tech, as we will see, but everything else is exceedingly strong. This is rotation, rotation, and rotation. It is not uh, the equity sector coming down, but it's the components within the ex equity sector moving, as we shall see later. Uh, for the time being, I think it's safe to say that we are still in a range in equities and that we will probably see both sides of the range. But the trend, I think, is still up. As I said last week, it looks like the bears had their chance and they have fluffed it. I think the market will continue to be underpinned uh, and be violent in its swings, but overall the trend is still higher. The yield curve is still doing um, pretty incredible things. Two stands we held in around the uh, 126, 127 level for a couple of days last week and then boom. Uh, you know, this is incredible steepening of the yield curve uh, and very fast. I think the Fed should be concerned if we go to the monthly chart, we will see that really we haven't seen anything like this since when? Since uh, 2015. Uh, on a monthly basis, we can see that really the only resistance that we have above is around 179, 180 basis points. And uh, this kind of steepening from effectively zero to, uh, you know, if we get that 180 basis points is a lot, a lot of uh, tightening of monetary conditions that is going on that the Fed is going to have to respond to in some way. Um, it's not just the two stands. I mean, the two stands are taking the brunt of it at the moment, but really all the other uh, parts of the yield curve, as we will look at next, are still in critical condition. And the triggers for real volatility in uh, SPX rather than continued rotation become levels, absolute levels in bonds and in the yield curve. Uh, and we will look at all of those and we will set ourselves uh, our parameters. We know that if prices start going through those levels, that is going to put a lot of pain into the equity sector. I don't expect it to happen next week or the week after, but we will have our you know, preparation done and we will know what those levels are. But on with the yield curve, the two most important parts, I think, are the 5s, 30s and the 10s, 30s. The 5s, 30s held in last week, uh, which is good. Um, you know, it didn't go through 154, um, but it's still critical, I think. If, if all it does is stay in this range for a month, two months, it still gives us the possibility that we will do one of these periods afterwards. Uh, and, you know, it creates some sort of inverse head and shoulders, uh, sorry, a proper head and shoulders on this chart. Um, and then, you know, look for something like 230, 240 basis points. That is a lot of steepening. That is, um, that is something that equities cannot possibly survive, um, you know, intact. But one, you know, one week at a time, while it holds this level, uh, you know, 154 on a closing basis, that is not enough to kill equities. And this is the part actually now that I'm um, much more concerned about 
um, in a good way kind of thing. I want this, uh, the tens, thirties, to remain in this range. Uh, you can see the faint outside and then we definitely came back within the range. Uh, tens, thirties to me is going to be critical because the tech sector is going to be very susceptible to the thirties. So if tens, thirties can, um, uh, can hold in, that tells me uh, two things. One, that the market is uh, beginning to trust the Fed and it's saying, yes, the Fed does have the tools to, uh, to control inflation and is willing, that is to me far more important, will be willing to use them to control inflation. Because if they lose control of 10s, 30s, they're basically saying, we don't believe you will use your tools. Uh, we all know that the Fed has the tools. We all know that the Fed can hike rates at any moment, can stop QE, and it can stop inflation dead. It can make it go negative. We can have deflation any time the Fed wants. But the question is, do they have the willingness to use those tools? And that, to me, is going to be reflected here in the tens, thirties. If we start going, you know, violently outside of this range, that to me is a sign of no confidence in the Fed, uh, that people think that they're full of political bullshit as opposed to, um, you know, be willing to use their tools. And if that happens, then the tech sector is going to be absolutely annihilated. What are the important levels in every single uh, part of the curve? These are fives. 796, um, so that we are right on top of it. So that's 80 basis points. If we go through there, we start significantly going up. I would have thought there's absolutely no support till we get to, uh, you know, sort of 116, 117. That is a big move. That's 30 basis points. That's another notch of tightening, as it were. Um, you know, 25 basis point tightening. Uh, that is going to be uh, quite, quite painful. Uh, but that is, you know, fires, there's very little here. Either they hold in here, do one of these, or they just go straight away. Uh, so fives are in a critical pay, uh, place, and I don't think fires will survive for very long. What I do think will survive are the 10s and 30s. 10s, I think, uh, have 169 written all over them, but that will be the critical part. Uh, if we hold in to 169 on the 10s, and far more importantly here on the 30s, if we hold this 238 uh, basis points level, which equates to, you know, the 136.99 on TLT. The good thing about last week is that we never saw that level. We did an inside week uh, and we're still outside of the Bollinger Band. So we do have hope for the 30 year area to hold between 137 and call it 145, 147, uh, come in, hold, you know, close, couple of these gaps and then maybe go down just like it did here you know basically two three weeks of going sideways uh, several weeks of going sideways and then it might go but that to me is the critical part uh, I have these levels now you do too if it starts going through there and closing through there then the whole yield curve will be shifting upwards and that cannot be good for tech. And since the US indices are so tech heavy, and we will explore every single one in a moment, uh, that will tell you that the next leg down is happening. While we are holding in, I think everything has a chance of doing better. If we look at European bonds, and this is the bobble, you can actually see the difference, the marked difference in the how less steep the curve is getting and how much calmer the market is. Uh, basically, I don't think the, the really effectively we have had a 20 basis point move uh, 
uh, of tightening in the uh, in the bubble from minus 82 to minus 62. Um, that is not something that the ECB is going to be particularly worried about, and it certainly shows how much more in control of this curve the ECB is. Um, the Fed seems for now to be unwilling to do very much and uh, let the market dictate, as opposed to what the ECB doing is much more interventionist. So I would have thought that this level here at uh, minus uh, 68, 69 basis point is going to be absolutely key. And at that level, you definitely want to do straddles because I think the likelihood is that we uh, all basically put spreads because I think the likelihood is that we go back up towards 47. As I said, I think that if any part of the US curve is going to come under real pressure is going to be fives because if it's not fives then it'll be thirties. If people, uh, if the market believes that the Fed has got things under control and they can tighten at any time and bring inflation under control, if the market is concerned about inflation they will slaughter the twos and the fives they won't slaughter the 30s. If they're slaughtering the 30s, that means they don't believe the Fed. And when you don't believe the Fed, very, very bad things happen. So, you know, this is, uh, this is the bubble. To me, the really, really important level, as you can see, is minus 68, minus 69. Um, and the equivalent level, uh, you can see how much steeper it is now in the Bund. Uh, the you know the equivalent level starts being here at uh, minus 39 basis points. We start going down below through minus 39. Uh, that to me is a real vote of confidence in what the uh, ECB is doing. But you know conversely on the upside, we start closing above minus 22, and I think all kinds of very, very bad things can happen to the bubble. Um, and sorry, to the Bund. Um, so I, you know, I have these levels marked. They're going to be very, very important. Minus 22 and minus 39 basis points. Well, the dollar finally could not take the uh, widening differential between interest rates. Um, you know, the, the United States is going up more than anything else, and therefore the dollar at some stage had to respond in a corrective fashion. Still, the target to get short of dollars is 93.14 to 92.62. If we enlarge a daily chart, basically what we're doing is a corrective um, ABC. Let's see if we can... Uh, Correct. So basically we say that this bottom A, B, and now a C gives us targets, uh, you know, from, from 92.60 all the way up to 93.50. Um, you know, that's a 1% range in which we will do some uh, decent sized uh, puts because I still believe that even though we are in a sideways range in the US dollar for the first quarter or so. Uh, the overall trend now is for one of, uh, of uh, weakness in the dollar. The dollar needs to remain weak for them to be able to, uh, to, to basically refinance and continue the refinancing. Uh, I, I think we get there um, and test this this line from the underside and we'll have the conjunction with a 200 day MA ideal area to uh, to get short of dollars 92.56 to 93.63 92.56 to 93.63 very interesting for Dixie gold is indeed coming to interesting levels technically but fundamentally you only want to own gold if you don't believe the Federal Reserve is going to be willing or able to control inflation. Um, the ability doesn't come into question. Uh, they can kill inflation stone dead anytime they like. The question becomes, will they do it? 
um, you know, you have to give them the benefit of the doubt. I mean, I, I've seen nothing so far that tells me that they won't do it when push comes to shove. It's just that push might have to come to shove. Um, so, you know, why would you want to own gold in the meantime? Uh, why would you want? Why would you want to bottom pick? I mean, I I I am not bottom picking because I really don't know where the bottom, the absolute bottom, might be. Um, good technical levels for retracements for reactions are sixteen fifty eight, and really, if you say that this weekly pattern is an A B C down, then you are looking for anything between the 100 day which is 1640 all the way down to here which is 1450 um, you know that's a very wide range uh, is the dollar weak no uh, are bonds uh, strong in the face of IEI are real rates coming down no uh, why would you want to be long of gold I mean they're, they're just there is no sense to it if you want to Use have some levels uh, to see what you know for, for for a bounce. Absolutely, the level first level for a bounce I would say is between 1635 and 1658, and then after that we are looking quite a bit lower. We are looking down to 1450s. You know, can you get to the well? Not next week. You won't get to the 1450s, but can you keep on trucking lower? Absolutely, yeah, unless the bond, unless real yields start moving uh, back lower, and unless the dollar uh, and when the dollar uh, tops, as it were, that might be a good moment to pick up gold for a hundred dollars or something like that. But I don't think gold will be uh, an interesting market in, for the buy and hold crowd for a long time to come. Before we get into each individual um, index in the equities, I want to show you two of them, which quite clearly show that this is not an equity story. This is an internal rotation story. Transports. I mean, they closed on Friday, you know, right at the highs, uh, right at the highs of the move. Dow Jones closed within a whisker of the highs of the move. What's that? Uh, 400 points lower than the highs? Uh, you know, that, well, let's call it 500. Okay, that's 50 points, like just less than 50 points in the S&Ps. That is like 1% away from the highs. Um, so what is rallying is the reopening trade. Uh, and it's still rallying quite hard. There is absolutely nothing that tells you that these charts are about to break down. What is breaking down, uh, or uh, much less bullish, are other parts of the curve, and we'll have a look at all that. And we, But we know why that's happening. It's because of the yield curve and because of bond yields. And before we go to the NASDAQ, uh, which I think holds the key, we have a, we've got to look at the spreads, uh, what it's doing on a spread to uh, various other sectors. Now, this is XLF, XLK here. I'll, I'll enlarge it. But we are still in this area where we were in April um, and again in, uh, in June of last year. We, we, are, we might be making an inverse head and shoulders and we might be going back to where we were uh, before the crisis, which would make sense because the crisis, if it's over, why should we not go back to around 0.3? So that's another, what, 10% um, in move, relative move between uh, NASDAQ and, uh, sorry, XLK and XLF. Why not? Um, it, but, the, uh, but what we are seeing at the moment, and especially clear in this chart, is that we have not broken down yet. Okay, we, we are, this is uh, the NASDAQ against the S&Ps. We start. We basically could not hold these levels up here. Everybody is, you know, when when retail comes in and buys, they buy the all the Momo stocks, the high beta, 
And all that's happened is that those stocks have gone back to some sort of support. That is all that has happened. So unless we start breaking a very, very clear support level and start going down through there, which, you know, is only going to happen if TLT starts breaking that 136.99 level, in my opinion, uh, then what this is telling me is that all that's happened really is that tech has come into support relative to other sectors. And given that, uh, you know, the downside at the moment is still very limited in the, uh, in the indices. This is, uh, again, uh, XLK against XLI, the industrials. Same story really as everything else. We haven't really broken out from the levels that we were in April. I mean, you can see how steep the decline was. And this is just a brief retracement. Um, you know, this is not the end of the world. It's anything but. We start breaking through these levels around 74 and we might see a little bit of acceleration for a few days. But I just want to show you in a bigger picture how little really has changed even within the rotation that we're seeing. Okay, let's talk NASDAQ and tech because that is the tail that's going to be wagging the dog. What actually happened last week? Well, it got to the support at 12,439 and never closed once below it. You know, did it do feints to, um, you know, to scare people out? Of course it did. That's what the NASDAQ does. But it held uh, the support at 12,439. I think until you see a, uh, a close on the 195 minute chart below there, um, you know, there is absolutely every chance that we are going to meander upwards towards this uh, 13,100 uh, level. It, it, unless the bonds start breaking down and I've given you the levels of the bonds and I think the most significant are the 10s and 30s. Um, if fives break, it's not such a big deal, but if 10s and 30s start breaking, I think the NASDAQ is going to have another leg lower. I'm not expecting it, okay? I'm really not expecting it. I think it's far more likely that we meander higher, but it's very, very clear the level that it has to break to start getting bullish, and that is uh, 13,334. Uh, let me... Uh, you can't really see it that well here, but this is, if I do that, hopefully you will be able to. 13,334, you can see how key it was uh, and, and how there's a, a big offer sitting up there, uh, how it's, um, you know, the, the moving average, it's below now, it's, sorry, it's, that level is above all the moving averages, so to break that, it would have to break every single descending MA. Uh, that would be very, very impressive, and I don't expect it to happen. And that is why I think that something like this, 13,100, is probably as, as good as we can see in the early part of next week. And that's why um, I think it's much better to buy individual sectors rather than, uh, uh, rather than looking for the whole of the S&P to rally. Uh, if NASDAQ can only get back to 13,100, 13,200, how is that going to give us new highs in the S&Ps? Other sectors would have to, which are much smaller in composition, would have to do enormous work. I mean, go up double digits for that to happen. Right, on to the S&Ps. Uh, and my favorite chart, the 195 minute. You can see how really we did we, we got exactly to where uh, the level that I thought would be the support last week, 37.25. I mean, you know, almost to the tick. Um, we tried it, a, you know, a second time. We couldn't. As I said, the bears are going to fluff it for the time being. And, you know, we, are, we closed well within the middle of the range of the week. I think the early part of the week was excessive uh, and we capitalized on it. Uh, the late part of the week was excessive too. 
and now we're going back towards this 3893 level uh, 3910 3915 I just you know as tech rallies a little bit those are the levels that we can see um, what would we have to break on the upside well we would have to start breaking this level here which is 3928 3930 I just can't see that happening because as I said uh, the uh, the likelihood of tech rallying much more unless the bonds in some way help it hugely um, you know it, it's it's unlikely and we have to play the odds so if it's unlikely and the other sectors cannot really uh, break through on those uh, on those charts on those relative charts on those spread charts against tech then we cannot in good faith expect anything more than you know brief forays into the 3900s uh, before we start getting some uh, some profit taking on that it'll all depend on the bonds but on the daily chart as you can see we have really stayed within the you know we try to break below the Bollinger Band that was you know far too much far too soon um, and now we're going to meander upwards and stop people out and then come back down to it that's the kind of market I expect the market where every side gets buried they get long at the top short at the bottom long at the top short at the bottom because that that is how markets turn and it takes weeks and weeks and weeks I was asked to cover EEM and I don't think that anything has changed. This is a weekly chart. I think the clear support is at 52.08 um, and that is where certainly uh, one can start doing some longer term uh, positions for uh, EEM. Um, the second support is 50.23. I think either of those levels from a long-term point of view are pretty damn good for the uh, I think it's going to take a while it's going to take several months of churning here before we start going up I would just keep on selling one to two week puts and rolling them uh, struck between 52 and 50 um, and just keep on selling those puts keep on selling those puts eventually you will get them and uh, you'll be quite happy to uh, to have got them in a few years time from a longer term perspective I think this 52 to 50 level is extremely important I would just keep on selling puts just to show you how much of an internal rotation inside the US uh, this whole thing is as opposed to an equities story um, you just look at Europe um, th these are weekly charts of the DAX and the, um, the stocks basically since the beginning of the year we are slightly higher in the stocks because the other markets uh, the peripheral markets have contributed quite a bit um, and we are basically unchanged in the DAX but you can see the ranges I mean we are if, if this was um, if we were having an equities story a worldwide equity story uh, the ranges would be much much wilder uh, uh, and wider and also there would be some sort of a pattern indicating some kind of a breakdown we have nothing in in the whole of Europe we have nothing in the whole of Japan we have nothing we have no um, no equities as a story weakness we just have internal rotation within the US and deviations captures this exceedingly well um, you know it, it's unlikely that we bust through this 3725 level and that we go much higher than testing the highs as I showed you you know you should but you can see what sectors are in trend XLE it's hugely overbought uh, why should it, you know it'll come back at some stage that tells me that uh, we are not going to go too far XLU is basically now descending and uh, that's all there is to it because you know the bonds are doing what they're doing XLB basically is just trucking along and um, quite happy the material sector um, XLK try 
to go down. Now it's a support. It'll go back up towards the middle of the line. But the, the likelihood of XLK now going, it's going to take a long, long time for these to base and then start breaking higher. And it's going to take a long time for uh, the, uh, the bonds to consolidate and give us the next move. I just don't think it's going to be an immediate thing. People are looking for the break of the highs, bust through the lows. I don't think we're going to get either. I, it just doesn't make sense to me. Bond yields are not coming down. They might be uh, consolidating, let's hope. And if they do that, then slowly, slowly, XLK over the part, of, you know, over the course of a few weeks and months, can start rotating and taking leadership again once they've deflated all those stupid Momo stocks. Um, so it's going to take a long time. Don't expect for things to change immediately. XLF is in trend. Um, you know, there's been, it gets overbought into the red, comes back. But to me, XLF is probably still one of the um, one of the most likely to outperform. Why? Because I see no evidence of bonds and the yield curve stopping to steepen. And I see, I mean, it could be just consolidating, in which case it's not going to help XLF very much, but it's certainly not going to harm it. Um, and also, as I kept on saying here, when the reopening trade uh, comes along and what is going to happen? We're going to have all the stuff that they put in um, in the banks uh, wrote off, as it were, and put into the reserves is going to come back onto the balance sheet and is going to go straight down to the bottom line. So for a while, XLF is certainly not one that I would short. I would get out when it's in the red and wait for it to pull back and then buy some calls and keep on trading it like that. That's the only one that I can see is in trend, but it's a very small part of the of the index of the S&Ps. And that's why I just can't see it by itself or with industrials dragging uh, the S&P to new highs anytime soon. So finally, on to the recap sheet. I've given you every single level that I've spoken about um, in the video. I would not, you know, I, I, I stress how um, gold is just a trade. The interesting part will be if we get to the 93.60 level in DXY. I think that could be a very, very interesting trade in the longer term. Uh, and we'll definitely tweet you about it. I think NQ is the one to watch. Uh, if NQ cannot break 13,334, uh, I think it's unlikely that we break the 39.25 area in S&Ps. And if that is so, then we are still in what I described as this range where the SPX is being pushed and pulled between 37.25 and 3,900. I think 37.25 or even 37.76 are going to hold it this week. I just don't see the early part. It, you know, it's quite obvious that they're going to push it up to uh, to these kind of levels. Um, but I think that you do these one by threes, one by four put spreads that we did, and I think it's going to pay off again. I just cannot see it above 39.25 unless we get a break of 13.34 on the NQ, which I think it's unlikely. Uh, I've given you all the levels uh, here that I talked about in the video, and I will definitely tweet you about everything as things develop next week. Thank you very much indeed, and have a wonderful Sunday.